I'm not doing a what if all his videos, okay? They don't mean anything. None of these mean anything. The negative effects of science on society. We know. I'm aware that this guy opposes the concept of empirical experimentation, okay? I'm familiar. I've talked to him. I know this for a fact. But they're funny? No, they're tiring. There's nothing for me to add. If you guys think it's funny to watch him just say literally like a uh, random, like roll a dice, construct a sentence bull you can watch it on your own time. I have nothing to say. Wash, please. Oh my god. in crisis in the bloody 17th century when some historians think one third of the world's population why are you so quiet population died a couple of scientists in western europe developed a system that would utterly change the world at the time most people lived in grueling poverty with daily routines that had scarcely changed since the invention of agriculture 10,000 years earlier while worshiping gods and ruled by kings and feudal landlords however after the scientific method everything changed the world charged headlong into globalization and industrialization. The world's population over the next- No, no? Globalization didn't happen until at least, like, we're, like, that's a post-World War II phenomena. Globalization took place largely after international travel and commerce became cheap enough to do uh, on a reliable, regular, and fast basis. Industrialization is what kicked off. Globalization took till, like, ages after. Maybe he means world trade? We've had world trade for millennia. Globalization, that is to say, cultural, social, and economic interconnectivity between nations all around the world is a seamless unit. That is a post-World War II thing. I think they're using globalization and imperialism interchangeably. Yes, I know, he's retarded. I'm just saying. Next 350 years went up 10 times over. Humans mastered nature, and we went from a world where people barely made it through- Mastered nature? Through scrounging for food, to one where two billion people were obese. From one where women spent their lives- There are still billions of people who, uh, don't get enough to eat every year. Birthing ten children, hoping half of them would make it, to one in which they were emancipated and legal equals to men. However, with all these gains, what have the costs of modern science been? Uh, women's liberation was not a product of the scientific revolution. Uh, it was a product of social movements? Is he just describing time passing? I thought he was just talking about industrialization. Industrialization didn't liberate women. All great things in the world of men go to sin, and what are the costs of the scientific- What? I, again, it's, this, it's just so- Because it's like insane bullshit with no justification whatsoever. Yes, all good things go to sin. What the f*** does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's a guy- This guy's literally like a, like, homeschool 22-year-old who tweets out, like, somebody whose entire thought process was constructed by, like, Hearts of Iron 4 games. He doesn't- it, it, everything- he's, it's like warrior philosopher pontification from somebody with, um, who, who thinks they have, like, a, a collegiate level education because they've read War and Peace, or probably not War and Peace, maybe The Art of War? I don't know. At what point do we break out the crack pipe? Revolution is created upon modern society. But uh, for a story dismantling one of the sacred cows of our modern culture. Something that few would write about since it's just too close to home. Okay, we're dismantling science. I can't do all this, by the way. If you think we're making it through all of this, you're absolutely insane. ...around us, with space being one of the most popular studies and drawing lots of attention from the public. Space is really fascinating, and learning about it can be awe-inspiring. Something that the Magellan series, Cosmic Vistas, shows beautifully. The series covers topics like far-off moons, the sun, the northern lights, and really puts in a... This is an ad? God damn it! ...using the link in the description below. We live in a world made by science. I'm sitting in a mall's food court writing this episode, looking around... <laughs> okay. People eating food shipped hundreds or thousands of miles, refrigerated by train, plane, or automobile. There are large fluorescent lights, mini suns above me, while I'm writing on a laptop. You could go through how technology has revolutionized every single aspect of our lives to a degree that almost seems absurd. Even something as basic as gardening, which you'd think would be exactly the same as 5,000 years ago, has changed markedly due to the invention of fertilizers. It goes from how our population has been able to go up by a factor of eight in the last 200 years, how we can communicate instantaneously, how it doesn't take 11 hours a week to wash the dishes and clothes and like. When the first atom bomb was dropped, the only comparison the scientist who made it could make to illuminate its power was with the Hindu god of destruction. There's a very fascinating book called The Knowledge Machine, and it's about how science developed and what allowed the massive technological advance. 
Iron Rule. The Iron Rule goes that you can only have a scientific debate by arguing over empirical evidence, and from that, you must make an experiment where one set of the results will disprove one side of the debate. What? Wait, what? Their philosophies is that science is willing to make a sacrifice of something called the Iron Rule. The Iron Rule goes that you can only have a scientific debate by arguing over empirical evidence, and from that, you must make an experiment where one set of the results will disprove one side of the debate and prove the other. The Iron Rule puts- What? Is he- is he misinterpreting the- what? It's a massive emphasis on real physical evidence and narrows the mind, cutting out broader theories, philosophy, and the like. For evidence to see what the world looks like without the Iron Rule and why science has been so insanely successful- As a scientist, that rule doesn't- yeah, I have no idea what he's talking about, as always. He probably read a book where this term was used, and he's just going to talk about it as though it's common knowledge, because he doesn't understand how to synthesize the information he's read. Look at the humanities. The humanities, with history being an example, has no method to objectively prove which point's correct. I mean- Wh what Also, what is this map? India is communist-leaning? Egypt is communist-leaning? Madagascar is communist-leaning? What am I looking at? I can't- I can't go into this, man. I- what if alt his maps always deliver? Yep, they tr they truly do deliver, like a Jackson Pollock painting, and about as sensical as one. Just look at my debates with communists, where from my perspective- What is the black part? I don't- non-communist countries? I don't know. Perspective, the 80 million people killed by communism is evidence enough that communism is evil enough- It's 80 billion, actually failure, well, for communists, that definitely wasn't real communism. This is what the debates in previous versions of science, like that between Plato and Aristotle, was like, with no way to disprove a theory in the same way we can objectively see that the sun doesn't revolve around the earth, since both sides under the iron rule agreed to- What? He does realize that empiricism predates the scientific revolution, right? Like the concept of empirical evidence? Why is he talking about communism? I don't know! I don't know! submit themselves to a shared arbitration method. The author, Michael Stravens, goes through how societies incentivize scientists to do the tedious task of accumulating large amounts of evidence without thinking about the broader world. He talks about the anti-curiosity of modern scientific culture, how scientists don't leave their discipline or think about broader matters. He uses quote The reason scientists tend not to leave their discipline is because A, they're economically incentivized to stay within a very narrow research track, usually for the, um, the grants they need to fund their research or for the corporations funding them, and B, uh, if they br sort of branch outside of their field of expertise, they're no longer experts and are no longer that good at what they're trying to do. Some figures like Stephen Hawking, Richard Dawkins, and other key scientists saying philosophy has absolutely no application, and he described it as a sort of sermon to science. That is true. Scientists who say there's no value to philosophy, that is incredibly dumb. That is true. Scientists who just sit down and count their numbers and do their job. The argument I would like to make is that the Iron Rule is possibly the greatest invention in the history of man. However, our society, upon seeing its remarkable results, has since tried to apply that principle to every aspect of our culture, which has created disastrous effects. Possibly the most renowned scholar of religion in the last century, Houston Smith, has a fascinating point of the nature of science, and that he refers to as a search- This is, uh, this is us trying to fight God, by the way. This is a laser beam we're aiming at the heavens. Is this video based entirely on a Twitter beef he had? I don't know. If the point, if the point here is that, I, so I think what he's referring to here is like a kind of scientism. Um, the idea that um, it's detrimental to pursue empirical uh, evidence gathering to the, um, to the detriment of everything else. Because I do think there's value to that. You know, it, it comes across as a kind of like Steven Pinker attitude where you are obsessed with charts and numbers but by not critically examining the metrics by which you're analyzing them or the broader theories you're applying to them, all you end up doing is perpetuating the status quo. Um, you, you basically like de de denounce the value of, of, of ethical analysis and just, I guess, analysis in general um, in, in favor of evidence gathering. The scientific method is about testing what's true, you know, but empirically true things, ethically true things, and conceptually true things are not all the same, and you can't apply the scientific method Okay, you, you can, to an extent, apply the scientific method to ethical systems, but not really in the same way. It's, it's more a matter of testing your, your theories, you know? It's not really the same. Light that can pinpoint a single place in the sky, but is incapable of seeing the whole sky and all the stars that are in it. They actually can. Um, they, they can look at the sky, too. They're looking up in that picture. 
This is literally the nature of the Iron Rule, however, and that science is so powerful, and that it keeps its focus small and on very particular pieces of empirical data. However, the things that are foundational the way we view the world aren't inherently scientific, and are by nature irrational since you can't build a worldview off science since science is just a way of processing information. The things that build our worldviews and the ways we understand reality, or liberalism, Christianity, feminism, and more, aren't in any way scientific. We throw around the term- Okay, again, I need to give credit where credit's due. Technically, what he's saying here is absolutely correct. He's saying that the, the ethical and social systems that we build our world upon are not matters of scientific empiricism, but rather of, of other things, of, of social systems, of, of biases, arbitrary preferences. Yeah, no, I, I agree with him on this. This is an agreeable thing. He is saying something here that is correct. Though I'm assuming if we, you know, if we go far enough, he'll ruin this for us. The evidence says too much in our society, given that most people have no idea how much a science they can be arrived at through scientific means, though? No, no, they cannot. If you believe ethical conundrums can be solved with scientific uh, processes, then you're doing the whole uh, Sam Harris is ought gap crossing thing, which I do not believe in. I'm a moral anti-realist. The moral and social bedrocks upon which we form society are not just like matters of scientific inquiry. Scientific process is driven off subjective variables. Most scientific studies today aren't replicated, which means a scientist can bullshit data and almost no one will catch them. This is also true. It's also a matter of capitalism. Because uh, grants go to novel research and corporations want to keep pushing the envelope, uh, there's very little incentive for researchers to go back and try to replicate pre-existing studies, meaning that oftentimes uh, shoddy studies, shoddy methodology, uh, you know, they don't actually... Um, uh, they, they, they don't actually get caught. Peer review? No, peer review is something different. Peer review is just when you publish a paper, you have other researchers go over it. Replication is when you try to do the study over again, uh, over again in the same conditions to see if it, you know, if it, if it works, if it was done well, you know? Peer review just means like checking over a paper. Uh, replication means doing the paper over again. It is true there's a serious problem with a lack of proper replication. Scientific studies paid for by certain sponsors are four times as likely to get results that benefit that sponsor than independently funded science. That is true. Corporations will absolutely wink, wink, nudge, nudge, bias the results of research done by, um, you know, you ever seen one of those websites where it's like studies found that this type of technology is super great. And then like it's all funded by a corporation. It reminds me of a portion of a um, Captain Disillusion. I think it was the Captain Disillusion video on resolution. I think. I love Captain Disillusion. What a great channel. Uh, let's see. You have photo of the moon, interlacing, aspect ratio, frame rate, resolution. Where's that bit? On film, factory made study that purports downright probably didn't even know that. Why would you? The screens you watch things on aren't getting any bigger. There is a study that purports downright magical benefits in 8K resolution on reasonably sized screens, but it seems to be sponsored by a company trying to sell those screens. And the fact- Mmm, you know, like that kind of thing. Good, good of him to put that in there, by the way. Point it out. If you look over history, science has done a poor job of keeping a consistent view of the world. On top of this, data is incredibly easy to skew or portray in a certain light. I've said this a couple times before, but a hundred years ago, the scientific consensus believed that races were discrete things with differing abilities, that the best way to manage an economy was with central planning. <laughs> wait, Karl Marx wasn't an advocate of central- wait, 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 hold on, don't you- okay, I'm not even getting into this and competition was bad for the economy, that all men wanted to secretly kill their fathers and sleep with their mother, that the universe worked on perfect clockwork Newtonian principles. Alternately, even 30 years ago, people believed that all prehistoric and tribal people- I mean, the universe doesn't work on clockwork Newtonian principles, but it seems to operate on principles consistent with, like, relativity. You were right when you said that what if all history read some shit and failed to properly integrate it? The Iron Rule appeared in a book called The Knowledge Machine by Michael Strevens. Yes! Yes! I- called it and whenever this mother f anybody likes him just randomly uses a term authoritatively it's because they're failing to properly synthesize something they read yeah okay thank you thank you very much who are inherently peaceful which is completely insane if you don't massively skew the data which the scientists involved did another thing that we don't really like to think about as a society is how often entire scientific now we're loud again okay turning down the volume 
theories of the world from which we make massive social policies that affect billions of people are often created by not having really any thorough science. And just because it's a popular idea, the academics involved side with it, and it becomes the majority opinion that requires massive amounts of research to disprove. An example of this comes from- Please give me an example. From a fascinating book I read recently called Johan Hari's Lost really? Connections. And it's about how people used to believe that depression was caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain and wasn't related to the rest of your life. And through taking- It- It- Wait, hold on. That's not an if-or thing. Chemical imbalances in your brain can be caused by a variety of things, including stuff going on in your life. That's how it works. There's a relationship there. The inability to, um, called anhedonia. The inability to, um, there's been a big conservative push against, um, chemical psychiatry lately because, um, I genuinely believe it's because conservatives want young men to be mentally imbalanced, um, because it makes it easier to radicalize them into fascists. Here's his Wikipedia page, the guy who wrote this. Uh-oh, this is the guy who wrote this? Plagiarism, fabrication. Holy shit, these are huge. Oh my god. Use of libel law to suppress criticism. Nice. Only the best. Yeah, anhedonia, the inability to experience pleasure, or the reduced ability to experience pleasure. Like, is literally, like, it, it, it refers to, at least possibly, like, your brain is just not responding to the chemicals that are normally meant to regulate your emotional state. Um, yeah, that, that's true. That's a fact. This guy's entire Wikipedia page is just... He was suspended from the Independent and later resigned after admitting to plagiarism and fabrications going back to 2001 and making malicious edits of the Wikipedia pages of journalists who had criticized his conduct. Nice. This guy seems like a, um, like a, a bastion of, of ethical, um, lost connections, experiences, da da da. Carcass Reviews praised the book, extreme skepticism of, um, psychiatrists criticized his extreme skepticism of antidepressants as wrong, unhelpful, or even dangerous. Um, describing the book as a hodgepodge of others' research put together into something that was by turns half baked and half a story. Sharp criticisms misrepresented medical, psychiatric, and scientific establishments as some kind of shadowy, monolithic organization. That sounds something What If All Hist would like. Journal the journalist Zoe Stavry criticized the book for a lack of citations for key claims like between 65 and 80% of people on antidepressants are depressed again within a year. Damn, you'd think you'd get a citation for a claim like that. Reliance on the work of a single researcher, treating research in a single class of antidepressants as if it applied to all antidepressants, and conflating stress and depression. Wow, this book sounds like shit. He traced the source of that claim to a pop science book rather than a review of scientific literature. Okay, nice. Fantastic. I saw this guy on Joe Rogan when I was like 16 and completely he completely opinion of antidepressants and ADHD meds. Yeah, I'm telling you, the right is anti-psychiatry as a concept because they want to promote this idea of like, actually all you need to do is like exercise and get a trad wife and uh, vote Republican and that'll make your mental health good. Just be heterosexual, have children, and you'll be happy. It's basically like a broad social application of the idea that like, Women in the 1950s, if they wanted to be happy, just needed to be like better housewives. It's like, what? yeah, just fit better into the mold society has made for you and don't challenge anything and that will make you mentally healthy. Uh, Jordan Peterson does the same thing, though he's not as explicitly anti-medication, I think antidepressants, you could deal with that. However, what they found was that there was absolutely no evidence and no actual scientific study. Sorry, so as we've, as we've found now, and thank you for linking that, um, there's no reason to believe anything this guy says or anything written in this book. These, the depression was caused by a chemical imbalance in your brain and not the rest of your life. And also there were no studies that proved the efficacy of antidepressants, which actually work in the same range as a placebo and have no effectiveness. And so this entire theory of psychology was based upon really bad evidence that was pushed because the drug companies had so much money. Other examples are the theory okay. that was pushed because the drug companies had so much money. Lord Google agrees with me. He's aware that Google doesn't actually give the answer. You can't Google a question on science and then look at the blurb of the summary of the first page. Okay. Funny. Other examples are the theories that support Rousseau's view of the noble savage, where I said earlier, there was absolutely no evidence that tribal peoples didn't wage war or that tribal societies were open, free love, sexual paradises, which Margaret Mead wrote in her book about Samoa. However, the reality is that she was being tricked by the local Samoan population, and they actually have very strict sexual taboos. But this book became the foundation for decades of leftist thought. Um, 
So again, I don't want to get into all this because debunking what if alt history is like opening an infinite tome, pledging that you are going to debunk everything you read. However, I just want to point out uh, there has been a kind of like noble savage myth, a, a misrepresentation of indigenous societies to give the impression that they're peaceful. Uh, no human society has ever been peaceful. Uh, the standards we have about sexuality have changed massively uh, over time and place and what have you. Yeah, the pervasive leftist view on Samoan sexual promiscuity, true. Uh, there, there's plenty of evidence to indicate there are tribal and pre-colonial cultures that had much uh, more lax attitudes towards sex and relationships than we do, but it varies, it's complicated, a lot of stuff can happen, blah blah. Okay, gender unicorn, what are we doing? Another example of this is the gender spectrum, in which no scientist actually came out and made a scientific argument from anthropology. Yes, I know Rousseau did not mean noble savage as like all tribal people were peaceful. He's misrepresenting Rousseau here to an extent. But there is kind of like this patronizing attitude some people have that Native Americans were all like living in harmony or some bullshit. Anthropological or biological evidence for a gender spectrum. It was something invented by ex-communist writers. <laughs> okay, here we're doing the Frankfurt school shit or whatever. Uh, scientifically, no evidence for a gender spectrum, which is interesting. Hold on. This is interesting. Man, he really isn't that bright, is he? This entire video is about how there are things that science can't measure and there are social norms that our society is built on that science doesn't have a role in. And then he's saying that gender spectrums aren't real because there's no scientific evidence. He is doing the exact thing that all of the bug men lab coats that he's railing against here, uh, uh, he claims to do. He's doing the exact same thing where he's like, um, well, actually scientific evidence should have answers to literally every social problem. So uh, that is incredible, genuinely astonishing in the middle of the 20th century with backgrounds in literature, but now we're designing social policy around something that a bunch of literature majors kind of made up. See? See? He's doing it right now. He has literally stated science can't answer all questions. There's tons in our society that isn't scientifically rooted, and now he's getting upset that there is legal policy being dictated by something that doesn't have full scientific evidence behind it. The comp double think, literally, like, n like nothing going on up here. Like complete unawareness of what he's saying. It's incredible. And this is the problem you see in science, where we act as if the things we have discovered with science are immutably true. And he, what, does he, does he realize, does he realize that he's doing this? Um, the gender spectrum can't be real because there's no scientific evidence. Anyway, the main problem with scientists is that they think scientific evidence can f indicate everything we need to know about society. Perfect, but at the same time, it's often just a couple people made an argument in academia, and then because people liked hearing their argument, it became the standard opinion. What ends up happening- He- I- I don't even- he, It's- He- If anyone was just given that 30 second bit right there, like only that and nothing else, that right there would be a reason to discount everything that he said. Since these academics build their careers around their ideas, and thus if you invalidate one of their ideas, you invalidate their of whole career, Jason. is that as an idea gets entrenched, it's incredibly difficult to remove and requires an impossible amount of evidence over decades to change the academic consensus on an idea. That is absolutely not true? I, like, Newtonian physics had been an accepted model for over a century, and Einstein challenged it with relativity and succeeded. He challenged it with so hard that he single-handedly reoriented the entire field of, of physics. Uh, sure, he was challenged on it, but that happens anytime anything popular gets challenged. It didn't take decades of, 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 of multiple people. One guy, literally one guy, like the, like the Twitch chatter who derails the entire stream. One guy. <laughs> Even if that idea wasn't built on strong evidence in the first place. I'm going to use Skinner's behaviorism as an example of this, where Skinner was the scientist who used what? experiments with rats and pigeons to say that animals don't experience pigeon authentic emotions and it's all just conditioning in their childhoods. And this was an idea that was also expanded upon to humans. Yeah, all, all Newtonian physics guys are basically just the Twitch streamer, and then you see all the pog champs in chat, and there's just one guy, and it's Einstein, and he's, um, and he's giving them shit. Vosh, you're going a bit overboard. A big part of what led to the acceptance of relativity was other scientists confirming it. Yeah, of course. Obviously. I'm not saying they all took him at his word for it. They double-checked him, of course, and it took a long time. It took years. But what, 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 what if all history is saying is that scientific consensus is basically like a social norm in the sense that uh, people just get used to it, and no matter what, like if you want to change it, it takes a long time and a bunch of people... And that's not necessarily true. There are also subjects for which our understanding of the field are updating constantly. 
Um, you know, I know we don't pay a ton of attention to it, but like at every point, like right now, there is a ton of breaking research being done in a ton of fields, like all the time. Sometimes it's commercially viable and we hear about it. Sometimes it's purely theoretical and we don't. But the idea, the, the basic idea here is that he's trying to describe science as doctrine. Uh, 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 we're talking about a guy who lives his life, I'm assuming based on religious principles. He wants to reduce science purely to dogma. He, like, you know, it's just another religion. Uh, and that's not true. There are real problems with science as like a field. But uh, it is not a religion or a dogma. There are legitimate findings made. There is value. There is something worth defending here. And this idea is just insane. Where, tell me the dog that always bounces up and down and rubs its head against you when you get back from home doesn't genuinely love you. Or tell me that you kill an elephant sister. What? What? Wait, what? Wait, what? What? And this was an idea that was also expanded upon to humans. And all just conditioning and pigeons. They say that animals don't experience authentic emotions and it's all just conditioning in their childhoods. And this was an idea that was also expanded. I have never heard the idea that Pavlovian theory meant that animals don't experience real emotions. I thought it was just conditioned behavior. This happens to everyone. Humans, dog, every living thing can be conditioned in this respect. I've never, I've never heard it said that it's not because... Okay upon to humans and this idea is just insane where tell me the dog that always bounces up and down and rubs its head against you oh, when you oh skinner not Pavlov. sorry skinner not pavlov um did skinner say animals don't have a even if skinner said this i've just never heard this said scientifically some animal behaviorists took this to the extreme by teaching that animals didn't have emotions or intelligence okay so it was like a fringe theory i don't think this was like the normal I don't think this was like the standard assumption for animals. I don't know what we're arguing against here. Get back from home doesn't genuinely love you. Or tell me that if you kill an elephant's sister, that elephant's not going to be angry. And why wouldn't mammals show emotions? Because we're mammals and we have emotions. But what this allowed really was for the horrifying treatment of animals in meat factories. I got Interesting position for him to have. I did not know that. Uh, I, I, I didn't know that he would have cared. Ah, okay. I hate that term. And... We could treat animals terribly because they never had authentic emotions, according to Skinner. But Skin I did. I don't think Skinner said. I don't know. I don't. I don't think the idea that animals don't have real emotions through Skinner's research was not what led to factory farming animals. We've been treating animals callously for all of human history. Material conditions dictated that the profit motive would incentivize humans to engage in this kind of behavior. The horrible logic of factory farming is a product of capitalist profit maximization, not of, like, the people in charge of them believing in the Skinner's theory on human and animal intelligence. Skinner's theories took decades to disprove. The incentive structure involved with the Iron Rule creates a problematic social model. The functioning of the Iron Rule demands the scientists involved ignore everything. I think he's just making this up everything except their objective evidence and disparage other fields as a compensation for them cutting off their minds from other ways of thinking. Since scientists get real world results, society listens to scientists and assumes science is everything, but part of the reason science is so powerful is because it's so limited. However, something to keep in mind is that decisions in countries aren't made by their greatest geniuses, but by the broad crowds or those who happen to end up in power. And culture is never determined rationally and kind of just happens. What happened with science is that people saw the massive improvements that came with the scientific revolution and without thinking more deeply assume science is magical and could fix everything. They assume that the things they naturally assumed to be true were scientific. What ends up happening- I don't- I, I don't understand what point is being made here. There are things that people believe to be true that was scientifically tested. I, I, I don't understand. I don't know what's happening. ...is that due to science's massive real-world gains, normal people try to replicate the external forms of science without actually understanding science's purpose and its strengths and weaknesses. What ends up happening culturally is that since science cannot determine values, people bring their values into science, and then come out with the assumption that science validates their belief as a mirror. This is how all sides of the political compass have gone through a phase where they assume their values to be inherently scientific and infallible. And okay, so he's saying that people with political biases will use the aesthetic of scientific critique as a way of legitimizing their non-scientific positions. Yes, that is true. I don't know why we needed to include a political compass meme in low resolution to indicate that. That is true, but okay, moving on. In this video, I go through this whole process in more detail. Thus, the first weakness that modern society gets from the iron rule is arrogance. If you look at modern society, when we push for a policy, we go full out since we believe the information we have is completely accurate. Look at the 20th century's totalitarian regimes, pushing wholeheartedly towards scientifically provable utopias as they believe them, either with the ubermenschen or true communism. Look at how social justice...
Those aren't really comparable, um, though I do strongly disagree with the miss... Uh, nice... This face again. Big Red? No, Big Red is the other one. It all blurs together, I know, but it's the, it's the 2016 picture. It's the picture. I've seen this picture more than any other... I've seen this woman more than any other person ever. I've never... <laughs> I feel like I know her. This is Trigglypuff? No, Trigglypuff is fat. This one is... I don't even know if there's a name. Anyway, triggered? I don't know. I completely forget the point that I was making. This takes its beliefs to be objective truth, and any criticism of it is evil. Look at how- I have no idea what that has to do with that, that, that picture. Neoliberal economies believe that they're capable of revolutionizing the world and succeeding for everyone, everywhere, all the time. Why is the audio mixing so bad? I'm boosting the audio again. This arrogance is how modern society can culturally shift so fast, since we believe the thing we're changing towards has been scientifically proven to be objectively better. What is he talking- what- what false scientific claims is he referring to? What- what is he referring to here? Is he- is he- what, what is he talking about? What is he saying? What is he saying? <laughs> the story of the modern world has been the single-minded drive for- You ever get the feeling people who want to be philosopher poets also get- like, they're of the impression the best way to sound like a philosopher poet? is to not say anything specific, but just, like, make really broad statements with incredible confidence while, while doing this hand gesture, and people are like, ah, oh, of course, you know? Progress, which then leads us into various quandaries of going too hard. Various quandaries of going too hard. Again, the... <laughs> okay, please, please, give us, give us an example. Look at the world wars. Hey, yeah, his videos are like the MLK statue, okay? It's all up to interpretation. The threat of nuclear holocaust during the Cold War, totalitarianism, and right now, how most of the world's great economies are having crippling population collapse that will destroy their societies. And West- F Citation f needed. Western countries are experiencing social collapse in a bunch of ways, alongside the famines that are projected to occur over the next few years and global warming. Another aspect of this is the modern world's single-minded- the, the idea that a civilization will collapse because the population sags a little bit is so f funny. Do you guys remember how the Soviet Union was like this poor agrarian culture that went through revolution after revolution, and then it went through World War I, and then World War II killed 30 million of its people, and while retreating eastward, they had to burn farms, they lost, like, they lost a ton of territory, Siege of Stalingrad drafting everyone, and through all of it, they still ended up with a more economically productive country at the end than they did at the beginning? It turns out, like, you know, not to say they did everything perfect, but it turns out that actually it is quite possible to forestall civilizational collapse. You know, like the, the idea that like a population dip is going to be enough to bring down the West. Jesus. Fascism might be. Drive for principles to uphold the world. To support immigration is to support immigration under all circumstances. To be a libertarian or communist is to... What? What, what are we talking about now? What? push those fundamental economic or legal views into every aspect of life. The modern world looks for Newton's laws of motion to apply to human nature, but- It's a quote, what if old history 2022. Ooh, I want to see this guy talk to spirit science. That'd be good. That'd be a very good conversation. We need to lock them both in a room for 24 hours. Things are never that simple. Immigration might be amazing in one society and terrible in another. Greater wealth might make one country more free and another more authoritarian. This, this literally, this, I, okay, I'm just gonna let him run until he says anything that can be responded to. Another aspect of the iron rule is the lack of common sense that is going through our society. Scientists are- <laughs> The lack of common sense that is going through? You think he would improve the, um, the delivery of these lines if he was trying to go for the philosopher poet vibe? What, like, first of all, deferral to common sense. Second of all, going through? That doesn't even make sense semantically. Why would, wouldn't you, like, construct it a little? Yeah, syntax be damned, I guess. ...told to explicitly put away any preconceptions and common sense filters while doing scientific experiments so to not create bias. What? But action in the real world is much more complicated. What? Look at modern art, which looks... <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about modern art. I've been to a museum. All art made these days looks like this. On my other Twitter account, where I follow a bunch of furry porn artists, they all just paint this. And they're like, look, here's my fursona f And it looks like these. It's like this, but everyone knows it looks worse than this. However, from starting from the principle that all subjective things are equal, which we put above our common sense- Isn't this- isn't the- wait, hold on. How can he be making the argument that scientists are arrogant for believing science can solve subjective social questions, and then argue this is objectively superior to this? He- he's so stupid! He doesn't understand any of the claims he's making! He simultaneously wants to denounce scientists 
for being these, like, philosophy-addled bug men who don't actually care about philosophy. And then, at the same time, he wants to adopt the purported objectivity of scientific critique when making his social statements. He is doing both. He is trying to do both at the same time. Why would you ever make a video where you're arguing that scientists don't have enough respect for the social fields and then argue that your position on social issues is objectively superior? Oh my god. ...from the principle that all subjective things are equal, which we put above our common sense, we say that they must be equal... Who is saying all subjective things are equal? ...even though our common sense, gut instinct, and intuition would say otherwise. With common sense, you can immediately say NFTs are ridiculous, or that men and women have ingrained personality differences. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, I'm sorry. So, he, he wants to challenge scientists on their arrogance, and then he's like, um... Well, with common sense, you might notice, ah, yes, ingrained personality differences. Ingra what the f*** does ingrain mean? Do you mean, like, socially ingrained? Like, socially, men and women, on average, have different personalities because of the ways they're raised? Sure! I don't know who questions that. What, what do we mean, ingrained? Did he mean inherent? Inbrained? Do you think he meant to say inbrained? Maybe he meant to say a different stupid thing. But since we have no appeal to common sense in our society... <laughs> uh, if only everyone had the common sense of warrior poets like myself, we would understand that my positions on these social issues are objective, essentially scientifically provable. Now, let me go back to talking about these scientists who are always arguing that they have objectively reasoned stat. He literally had a section in this video where he argued that people with political biases will adopt the aesthetic of scientific critique to legitimize their biases. And now we're here. I can't... Oh my god! Remember when you said you wouldn't go over this video? I just... I feel like a reasonable human should be able to watch this video on their own and go like, Oh wow, <laughs> what a ridiculous idiot. But I, I can't trust, because... Because we lack common sense in society. That's why. You can't make that argument. Common sense would say that increasing immigration and exporting industrial jobs would result in lower wages, but some economists- And yet, sadly, all empirical evidence disagrees. Because industrial- first of all, industrial jobs are not even the highest paying, like not even by a little bit, and labor is a resource that can be used to expand your country and therefore increase the pot for everyone. It's not a zero-sum game. Like, damn, dude, there are a lot of industrial jobs in, in China. Do you want to compare the average wealth of a Chinese person to an average American? Bosh, what do these numbers mean? Who knows? I said otherwise, thus making it a scientific principle, thus meaning we could what? ignore what would otherwise be economic common sense. However, So, wait, now he's arguing that common sense overwrites empirical evidence? The iron rule trains us to ignore our whole minds and intuition, and intuition is often the thing that keeps us out of trouble. My friend once told me in dating you need to trust your intuition, since in dating we make decisions that are so complicated with a complicated list of values that- Uh, maybe for you. I use the scientific method when I'm dating. We can't consciously understand, but are still wise in a deep level in many cases, while if we cherry-pick a couple of values like wealth, age, height, breast size, etc. <laughs> Even he laughed when he said that. Listen couple values like wealth, age, height, breast size, etc. It leaves Yeah, my man. Leaves us lost in the millions of other variables that only intuition can find. The iron rule or making experiments with very clear rules and thinking that develops from it makes our societies very bad at seeing context. When the US invaded Iraq, we thought the locals would greet us as liberators since we were What the f does this have to do? Who's we? The Iraq War has kicked off the biggest protests in human history. We were starting with the principle that democracy was good, while not seeing the context that we were conquering their country. I do think democracy is good. When the same Bush administration started their testing program to identify failing schools, they didn't think of the context about what made those schools bad in the first place, ignoring the bigger picture, thus worsening the broader educational standards. Perhaps the saddest part of the iron rule is disenchanted. What does this have to do with science? Is he arguing that the Bush administration invaded the Iraq? Sorry, sorry, started the Iraq War and based his economic policy around scientific methods? Is he, is he arguing like the, yeah, the Bush administration was like d doing science to test out the mathematically, oh, dude, science tells us to do the Iraq War. We got it, bro. Oh, the iron rule strikes again, man. Oh, the, 
the science said we had to invade Iraq, but it turns out the science was wrong. <laughs> what the f*** does that mean? What is it for? Like, uh, like, the Bush admin is like, um, and I think, uh, the American people should, uh, stay peaceful. And then, like, there's a group of scientists behind her, and they're, and, and behind him, and he's like, uh, sir, you've got to take a look at this. Look over at these calculations, sir. And it's, like, in big flashing f***ing green letters, like, invade Iraq. You know, it's like, fuck. All the data. We, sir, we rechecked the numbers three times. It's certain. We gotta invade Iraq. And Bush is like, oh boy. <laughs> what are we talking about? What? The iron rule strikes again. Enchantment with the world. We are the only historic era I know of which views the world as a boring place. We act as if the world is- a What? We do? I do? Okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was cool. A boring, safe, predictable place where nothing interesting happens. What? What? Actually, if you think about it, probably the, the, um, this is like the opposite of true. Because for most of human history, most people just lived in a village with just a couple hundred other people and never had the means to travel. Uh, their life, day in, day out, would have been exactly the same every day for a lot of it. Um, the only thing that would have been meaningfully different is that their lives would have been in peril much more often due to disease or uh, mercenary armies, uh, you know, anything really. They, they, a lot more bad stuff happened. So, um, yeah, now we have the ability to see the world, space, travel, you know, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know why I'm looking at superheroes, by the way. You can see this in our pop culture in which whenever we have adventure or interesting stories, we put them in fantasy worlds. Unlike what? What? Is he critiquing the concept of fiction? He is. He does realize that, like, a ton of oral history prior to writing was telling stories of mythology, right? Like, they would sit around the campfire and talk about how Zeus loved f women as a duck or something. What? 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 The, he's, the Odyssey! The Iliad! The Odyssey! What? He's like... Uh, a good, a good testament to my deranged schizoid point here, sorry, schizo, not schizoid, my bad, is that the m modern humans have invented fiction, something that definitely did not exist before. Which, whenever we have adventure or interesting stories, we put them in fantasy worlds, unlike other eras of history which put them in history or in far-off lands. Uh, what? Wait. Literally what? Far-off lands? You, but... Spider-Man swings around in New York, far off lands to a Greek person circa 400 BC would have been like the, the myth, the mythological fire island of the sky or some shit. Far off lands to a Norseman a thousand years ago would have been like Niflheim. Okay, what are you talking about? What? Like, what, what he's he's literally arguing that we've invented the concept of fiction. Fables, were, uh, fairies were invented in the 20th century. True, true. Uh, mythology was as well, you know? Back before, say, like, 19, let's say, 83. Wait, wait, wait. When did the Frankfurt School open up their doors? Uh, before 1965, all stories were, um, were uh, 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 historical um, nonfiction stories, you know? Since the sacrifices made for the Iron Rule, demand we've... <laughs> Sir, we've looked at the numbers. I'm afraid you'll have no choice but to set your superhero story in Gotham, not in Chicago. But I, but I wanted to set it in Chicago. No, the science says it has to be in Gotham. It can't be in a real city. <sighs> the world dispassionately and not as an inherently adventurous or crazy place. The truth is that the world's an absolutely fascinating place. Stars are crushing against each other in space, breaking and warping time itself to create black holes that literally consume matter and send it to another reality. There what? Whoa, wait, 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 hold on. We, we don't know that stuff inside black holes goes to a different reality. We don't know what goes on in there. Hold on, hold on. It crosses the event horizon and past that point, we just have math, okay? Just, okay. <laughs> All right, don't, okay. Rivers in New Guinea filled with 25 foot crocodiles surrounded by jungles more savage than Jurassic Park. No, the jungles of New Guinea do not have creatures more savage than T-Rexes in them. I'm sorry to say. Do you think this guy, do you think he just has the brain of an infant and like you could shatter him by telling him that like 
1980s adventure movies aren't real. Like, if you told him Jumanji was made up, he would, like, start crying. The drug ayahuasca literally lets you talk to God. And it <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's true. That's true. 21 year old boy named Alexander conquered the known world. However, in the modern world. That's not the modern world. That was a while ago. That was a. That happened a while ago. Not now. World, we show very little interest in the world in general. Society doesn't think about space, history, nature, or other culture. What? 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 It, he's doing the pick me girl shit, except he's a guy and he's doing it as an academic. What? Like, I'm so special. Only I have developed an interest in space, nature. First of all, how the f do you think people would have had a determined interest in space in pre-modern history? What? They would have looked at the stars and developed constellations. That's all they could have done. Literally. <laughs> they didn't have lenses. Nowadays, we can live watch NASA satellites and rockets take off. Millions of people. You go on YouTube and take a look at the views on any video, like uh, uh, BBC nature documentaries, tens of millions of views. People are insanely interested in stuff all around the world. What is this shit? Sure is that much. Almost all of our cultural content is a masturbatory reflection of our own- <laughs> It's using a four by three image of the Simpsons as a reflection of modern culture. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I guarantee you the reason he's using this is because his f dad would watch this shit when he would like wander by the living room. He would see this in the TV and he's never engaged with modern culture since, which is why the only two elements of modern culture he's shown was a f DC superhero lineup and a four by three image of the Simpsons. Oh. <laughs> He's like, ah, yes. What what are the kids into these days? Uh, yeah, um, The Simpsons and um, Spider Man. He shows a picture of Superman. Tr truly, genuinely, medically necessary that this man, uh, I don't know, do MDMA and go to a nightclub or something. Own culture, whether through sitcoms like The Simpsons or the Marvel Universe, is parallel to. <laughs> Never before have humans said, talked about things that haven't actually happened. To our current society. The sociologist Max Weber talks about how we've disenchanted the world through the scientific revolution by getting rid of the idea that the world is a mystical, meaningful place. I view the world I live and walk through as if it was a fantasy novel and in- Holy shit we know. Holy shit we can tell. Oh my god. Like this guy goes on a hike and he has like a like a knobbled hiking stick or whatever, and in his head he's doing like a really bad Tolkien riff where he's like uh, uh, trying to narrate his environment. In the same way someone would desperately want to live in the world of Game of Thrones or Star Wars, because I think our world is inherently as interesting as any fantasy world you could invent. There's really no logical reason to not view the world that way. Modern society is... Do the people watching this not like realize how weird it is? I... Bro, other, other, I'm not like other people. Other people tell stories of wizards, but in my mind, like, we're the wizards. It's in most ways relativist and postmodern, in that the ruling ideology of modern Western countries is you cannot judge someone for subjective differences. Like what? What? Well, the modern ideology of Western cultures is that you can't judge people for subject subjective differences like their behavior what are you talking about like what religion they are how hard they work who what pe wait people judge other people for this shit all the time constantly i'm judging him right now i'm of the west and i'm literally a postmodernist. i'm judging the f out of this guy i love judging him i'm very judgmental they sleep with and the like However, the logical endpoint- I love judging people for how many uh, uh, people they've slept with. Like, what if all history and the number is zero? Believing in a subjective worldview is to believe whatever makes you happiest. Thus, if you can choose to view the world as a beautiful, mysterious, incredible place that we have a privilege to live in, why wouldn't you? That worldview is as much, if not much more true than viewing the world as a depressing, uninspiring, boring place. I, d I have no idea where this- vi I don't- I have no clue how we got here. I've literally, like, from, 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 from one to now, I have no clue how we got here. We were talking about, like, scientific bias and scientism as a concept, and now we're here, and I have no idea. What is the point he's making? That he's cool and special? 
Well, the point he's making is that he has no contact or communication with other people in his age group. I seriously mean that. Likewise, I hear lots of people say life has no meaning, which is really a non-argument. If you really are a subjectivist... Most people say life has no objective meaning, uh, but, you know, you make your own meaning, do what makes you happy, da-da-da-da-da. You would say that the argument that life has no meaning has no meaning, and you can just choose to live a life with meaning. What? What? Life has no meaning? Uh, so doesn't that statement have no meaning too? Checkmate. What the f*** does that mean? Me on shrooms? I hope you're not this stupid when you're on shrooms. Likewise, a truly subjectivist worldview would have no problem with societies enforcing meaning on their populations. I, I, I don't, I, I have no clue what he's talking about. Absolutely none. Uh, he's like, well, a tr if you like subjective things, I guess then Hitler is about as good as, as, as kittens, huh? Yeah, a tr um, hmm. If it results in greater happiness and better social results. Is that Hitler a big brother? That's big brother. I do think it's interesting that whenever What If Alt History talks about totalitarianism, he keeps bringing up Soviet or communist-aligned iconography. I don't know if I remember him ever doing it with anything Nazi-related, possibly because when he thinks of political bad, his mind immediately jumps to the Soviets and not to Hitler. Uh, it's just an, it is an interesting, you know, um, uh, 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 sort of bias there. I feel like he didn't need to add a giant picket. That's not Hitler, that's Big Brother because once you really get to the point where nothing has any meaning, you don't even have an argument to argue against that. What? What? Sh stop linking his Twitter! Stop! I've seen the links! I see everything in chat! I see your name! I see your f IP address! I see your real life address! I see your current height! I see how full your bladder is! I know everything! Stop! Look at chat! You can see if the links have been posted! I know! I am in your walls! I gotta pee? I know! Anyway, I don't understand what he's talking about here. I think his point is that if you're a modern society person, that means you don't want to judge anyone, but also you, then Hitler is as good as everything else. I don't know. I It's incoherent. In other words, the complete apathy the Iron Rule has for the world outside its scientific argument cannot work in the real world. We cannot hold massive parts Wait, of- Wait, does the Iron Rule mean- the propensity for applying scientific rigor to subjects that science can't answer, or does it mean total subjectivity? Because those are opposites. I don't know if he realizes this, but the kind of people to apply perceived scientific rigor to all social issues, like Sam Harris, are the opposite of the kind of people to say that nothing has any meaning or value whatsoever. The kind of person who would have tried to use science to solve all questions and the kind of person who believes all questions are unsolvable are opposite people. How does he not understand how stupid the shit he says is? It's difficult to even fully perceive how wrong he is because it's like a multi- I genuinely do not think you could pay somebody to consciously make a video this wrong. I actually think that it has to be an emergent property of like, um, of like, uh, 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 like a, a unique mind. It's kind of like how if you buy a sponge and you look at how it's got a bunch of holes in it, like you could never so intricately poke all those holes in like a, per in like a little dense block of foam to match the sponge. The sponge is unique and almost perfect in its holy construction, very much like his brain, you know, full of holes. Uh, you, but, but you couldn't do it deliberately. You just have to rely on the sponge, and it's the, the nature of the sponge to have the most holes, you know? That's how I feel with this guy. I feel like I'm looking at a big sponge, and I'm, and I'm looking at my, like, smooth block of clay, and I'm thinking, like, how the f*** do I do that? I'm, like, f***ing it up and shit, you know? I don't think I could be as dumb as this world in apathy since we must deal with them. Subjectivism, or what not caring, is, is not a real picture? option in that we as humans are animals who are genetically wired to have to care about things. Thus, those who push subjective worldviews balance their unrealistic worldview by ending up being the most intolerant of dissent of anyone today. The people who will tell you ex this doesn't mean this doesn't mean I can't respond to this because it doesn't mean anything. There's no it doesn't mean anything. Exactly what to believe the most now are those who will also say they're the most open minded. However, the parroting of the I Oh, by the way, my argument that this guy doesn't interact with people in his age group is supported by the fact that he is using comics like this. This guy is like 22, just so you know. He's like 22, if you can believe it. 
He's my age. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really figure that, would you? But he already tweets like a boomer. Like, just, what the f*** is this? Oh, etymology of state names. Interestingly, he doesn't seem to like Andrew Tate, which, um, I guess is kind of on brand. I wouldn't imagine him as like an Andrew Tate kind of guy. I'm an autistic AI hive mind overlord. I've ascended beyond niche internet micro celebrity. Was he raised in a strict Christian household? Almost certainly, yeah. He posted a picture of himself at some point farther back. He looked like a huge nerd. Now are those who will also say they're the most open-minded. However, the parroting of the iron rule in the rest of society means we live with a worldview that is terrified of any kind of abstraction. There are no social institutions to talk about life's meaning. Wait, we're terrified of abstraction, but also everyone is subjectivists who don't believe in judgment? So... The modern world is full of hardcore scientific empiricists who also believe everything is subjective and they don't want to judge anyone because judging people on subjective properties is bad, but everything is subjective, which means that nobody judges anyone for anything and they're also bored of the world, but also they are intolerant and they... Su <laughs> he has no idea what any of these words mean, does he? Nope. Or what the also, he was earlier railing against modern art. Exactly, Sparkler, yeah. He's like, uh, people are terrified of abstraction. Earlier, he was like, uh, if you don't have the common sense to know how boring-ass medieval Renaissance paintings or whatever are better than modern art, then, huh, well, you're pretty dumb, then. The purpose of our existences might be. To theorize about bigger ideas is almost taboo in most of modern society. For a look at this what? in the academic history world, in modern academia, the idea that history might have lessons or meanings inherent in it is taboo to study. You just have what? To the the idea of learning from history is taboo. What? It it is. To accumulate evidence and work for the knowledge machine, with higher level abstraction being taboo. Before World War II, academic historians were continually looking for the factors that resulted in the Roman Empire's rise and fall, China's decay, and the like. But Peter Turchin, who is very much the exception, is the only figure who I can think of who does this today. A big reason I'm able to be a professional public intellectual is. In <laughs> Holy shit! I have never heard a YouTuber unironically self-describe that way. Oh my f god. He is incredible. Holy shit! The balls of this guy? Can somebody find his picture? I know he tweeted it at some point in the recent past. He was talking about a walk. I saw it on my feed because I follow him. Oh my god, dude. He's incredible. Genuinely astonishing is Insta. Well, then link it. What, what am I in? What, 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 what do I do? Use Instagram? Wait, he actually looks a little bit like JF Gariepi. Uh oh. Hope he has a better attitude on women than that. Holy shit, it's Andrew Callahan. Holy shit, it's gritty. Oh my god, this guy gets around. None of these are as dorky as I remember him looking. I remember him looking dorkier. I'm disappointed. But you guys see the Gary Epi thing, right? Kinda? Okay. Maybe I'm remembering somebody else looking dorkier. Internet creates a void for higher level reasoning and spitballing to invent new ideas that academia simply blocks due to its misapplication of the iron rule. <laughs> One more time figure who I can think of who does this today. A big reason I'm able to be a professional public intellectual is the internet creates a void for higher level reasoning and spitballing to invent new ideas that academia simply blocks due to its misapplication <laughs> of the iron rule. The truth of the matter is that humans need to be able to dream and have broader level theorizing about the world in order for life to be worth living. For just one mm -hmm. example, a book that really changed But don't do modern art though. Don't do modern art. My worldview was The Worm at the Core, which is a brilliant book about how death informs and drives every single aspect of our lives and how you can trace the whole of the human experience from the knowledge that we must die. But this is the most Eastern European name I've ever seen in my life. One of the things touches upon is our inability to conceptualize our value as humans before death. To give ourselves a place in the world and a story that explains our suffering, we start to wilt. This is why every single society in history has myths and idea of the afterlife. We need to have stories that aren't scientifically verified to not wilt and die. Wait, wasn't he literally just giving shit to modern society for escapism and having stories about stuff that isn't the real world? Was he not literally just doing that? And now he's like, ah, well, this is why all great societies have, uh, oh my God. 
high before how hard life is. There's no way you can structure values or stories or a narrative around science because it's just a fundamentally different way of thinking. But you were just, you were just arguing that creating stories in another world with stuff that isn't scientifically, empirically falsifiable is... What? For example, there's no way to prove if, say, the fascists or the communists were worse or what- What an interesting specific point to open with, what a fault history. Hmm, yes, ah, ah, yes, some issues are subjective. Like, for instance, how bad Hitler really was. But even a concept of worst would be, and it's all- to Didn't you debate this guy? Um, not really. He, uh, he showed up and he was making the claim that there is absolutely no ideological link between the um, abolitionist movement, the civil rights movement, and the BLM movement. And when I called him on that, he basically just got increasingly upset. Um, that was literally, it was like an hour of that. Then he invented an excuse to leave and he ran away. That was it. I, I talked with him and that was it. Yeah. He, there, there was like, you can't talk with him. He, in his head, he just has like a collection of insane incorrect points that he will die before admitting he's wrong he, he's basically just like immune to evidence as a concept yeah he faked a doctor's appointment to dodge he was like uh, i suddenly have a dentist appointment or something how many books have you oh yeah he i was like mm, i think there's an ideological link between the civil rights movement and black lives matter and he was like uh how many books on that have you read? Uh, you're gonna have to name 15 books on the link between those two movements before I'm willing to talk with you. Yeah. Dependent upon your values, what you're trying to get. Didn't he say MLK was a mixed bag? No, that was Charlie Kirk. And how you were raised. A big problem we have is that we treat myths as the same. A photo of the day I dropped out of school. Wow. It all fits, doesn't it? It really does. Every puzzle piece. No, yeah, all explains a lot, yeah. He was too smart for school, you see. The scientific facts. An example of what myths can do is when I dropped out of college, I felt nervous. Well, strangely enough, mind you, both of my parents told me dropping out was a good idea. But my father's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to publicize that one. <laughs> no shot. <laughs> Cap. <laughs> said every single one of your ancestors decided to get on a three-month voyage in a rickety boat. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, as all What If Fault History videos have to, we've come now back to, um, uh, 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 <laughs> ethnic ancestry. Where lots of people died to go to a strange continent where they had nothing. That made me realize I could do this, and I successfully dropped out and established myself as a financially stable adult. Jordan Peterson- <laughs> Your- your ancestors crossed the- the Atlantic, therefore- 22%. I'm sandwich. His book, Maps of Meaning, whether or not you agree with his other political opinions, is a brilliant book about why people are willing to die for their stories. The story is a way of navigating how to act in the world. When Westerners uphold the story of the brave 300 holding against the Persians, all of the story has been exaggerated. Again, was he not literally just talking about how creating stories was evidence that in the modern world, Renaissance paintings are fine, guys. That in the modern world... Okay, we'll move on because you guys are distracted. ...provides an example of what men with honor can do. And if I was holding a trench against an... Okay, anyway. Was he not literally just talking about how the fact that we create stories that aren't real is evidence that in the modern world we're bored? Didn't he say that? I wish I could... I wish I could just get him here for a second and be like, here are two objectively contradictory things in your video that not even the most talented speaker could explain away the contradiction for. Can you please help me out here? Unstoppable Chinese horde in the next war, I would love to have that as an example. The founders of the Christian church knew this and said the stories in the Old Testament like Noah's Ark or Adam and Eve were symbols for correct conduct, as were almost all of the religions of their time had a similar view, and it's still the case with Hinduism and Buddhism today. When scientists take down religions for the facts being wrong, they ignore the spiritual symbolism that goes with them rather than taking them at face value. An example of this is from Rene Girard's book And I See Satan Fall Like Hello. Lightning, which uses Christ's resurrection as a story to show how the only way to escape the endless cycle of human status seeking competition is by holding on I don't know what he means. Nobody does. Yeah, I to know. To an abstract idea of goodness, which explains why a story about a carpenter's son dying on a cross 2,000 years ago has been able to support multiple civilizations, which just doesn't square unless you take a symbolic view of it. Humans need to be able to use our imaginations and dream to be able to live. He was just arguing that creating stories outside... He was...
the author he mentioned. You can reasonably assume that any author he likes will be a hack. I mean, the, again, holy shit. When you're looking up an author and the criticism section is this long, holy shit, like consistently. Oh, and this guy was a Catholic convert, of course. So a Nazi. The view of humanity we have is a combination of the blank slate, where we see humans as malleable things that can be crafted by their societies to be anything without any pre-existing programming and the factory, where things have to be mass-produced and uniform to be as efficient as possible. The reality is humans are- What? 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 Those have nothing to do- Wait, what? Those have nothing to do with each other. The pursuit of social efficiency has nothing to do with the tabula rasa idea of human development. Those are- t Okay like plants being cultivated in a garden. We need basic preconditions like soil, water, air, and the like, but different kinds of plants which need each other need different conditions and grow differently. You can't just take a plant and change its conditions and assume it will grow as well. At the same time, we need air and space to grow. Uh-huh, D yet different people are different, that is true. And yet we do need air. <laughs> That's true. M much like plants in a garden, humans need air. And we need to be able to grow towards the sun in our imaginations- to <laughs> Towards Asgard. Guys, this, by the way, this is not an example of creating a story of another world to indicate board. Hey, isn't it weird how what if all history is so bored of reality that he has to use these fantasy images as a way of demonstrating his points? Hmm, curious. Myths and dreams are the only ways we know what way we want to grow. What if all this? And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please like, comment. I or didn't. Well, that was worse than I thought it would be. I, I swear to God, he's getting worse. One of these days, I'm going to tell my grandkids this used to be an actual alternate history channel. No history was talked about here! It just ends? Well, he just rambles for the entire video. There's not really even a point. That was a beautiful video. You really summarized why we shouldn't be nihilistic like modern society says we should? I thought it was about scientific arrogance. How is that nihilism? People who try to solve ethical questions with science are stupid, but not nihilistic. They're the opposite of nihilistic. Sam Harris isn't a nihilist. He's just an idiot. <laughs> He's not actually an idiot. He's just really arrogant. Funnily enough, this guy's like Sam Harris in a lot of ways. But Sam Harris is way smarter. I've been saying this for decades so much I actually agree with the Unabomber Manifesto lull. Everyone having fun at the party until the What If Alt History fan uh, walks in with the uh, black backpack and the um, Kevlar vest. This might be the most interesting, thought-provoking channel I've come across on the platform, and I've been actively using YouTube for almost 20 years. Really? Actively using YouTube for almost 20 years. Thank you, David. I mean, he might mean since, like, 2006. I, I, I don't know. I think you would say, okay. YouTube came out in 2005. Was it 2005? I thought it was 2006. Okay, 2005. I guess that's almost 20 years ago, man. Notice how the one comment down here that he actually favorites is the one shit-talking antidepressants. I'm telling you, the push against psychiatry as a field has been massive from the right lately. Basically, every conservative figure has some kind of story or anecdote or, or, or like position where it's like depression's not real, ADHD is not real, anxiety is not real. Uh, in reality, what you need to do is shut the f up, stand by social norms, never challenge them, have some children and work until you die. And that'll make you happy. Um, it's, a, it's a very, I feel like the, the line they used to do with housewives where it's like, yeah, ev all women enjoy being a housewife just take mommy's little helper and it's like some crazy f***ing like heroin shit or whatever that they're taking to like get by and not want to kill themselves and there were a lot of suicides back then by the way or barbiturates or whatever um except they're doing it with everyone you know uh speed was popular yeah no like there was a huge drug problem back then because like housewives were miserable because they were second class citizens that had no autonomy at all yeah Antidepressants are hit or miss, but that's the point. You know, a lot like the garden of plants. People need different things. Antidepressants can help some people. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to click. Um, At a time when the world was won't. in crisis, no? in the bloody 17th it's century, like, when some historians think you know, one third of the world's population it. died, oh, I a couple of scientists in Western world in Europe developed the system that would utterly change the world. At the time, oh, shit. Sorry, that was playing. Let's watch it again. Nope. Absolutely not. That video exhausted me, okay? That video, much like... Much like Aki having sex with the angel devil's 
tight bussy. Um, my life force has been drained. Uh, and I just, we need to do this news story, and I need to get out of here, okay? I need to, like, revitalize my life force. What's wrong with Sam Harris? I've only listened to a few of his podcasts. Sam Harris is like the... Sam Harris is like the apex of the, um, I've read three books on this subject, it's time for me to come out with my groundbreaking introspection on, on it. Like, time for me to revolutionize this field that I've spent 20 minutes looking up on Wikipedia. He, he's, he's very Islamophobic. Um, he's liberal in a lot of the bad ways. He's not as bad as a lot of mainstream conservatives, but he, yeah, he, yeah, it is, I haven't, the last, the last thing he did was getting bullied off Twitter. What if autists and Jews? Holy shit! I should ban all of you. Do you know how many times this has been linked? I know, I've showed it on stream before. I've seen, I've shown this on stream before. Yes. He was doing the JQ shit. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the 87th reminder, now that we're done with the segment. God almighty.